now you can see the four diodes that form the bridge rectifier. The way it works is you can see the motor tabs kind of connect to two of the diodes and then on the opposite two connections are where the AC current, so live and neutral or live and neutral, doesn't matter which goes where in this case. Um, so you can see one wire, this white one traces back to the switch. I'll hook it up to my 12 volt power supply and see which way makes the motor spin. And then I'll mark with a Sharpie, which side is positive and negative. All right, so um, this is a counterclockwise spin, and this is a clockwise spin. And if you remember before, in a video I said it was spinning counterclockwise, um, which would be like this, which means that this is the negative side, and since I've got a black Sharpie, I'll just put a mark on the motor so I remember that that's negative and I will make the bridge rectifier according to that specific. The way that the bridge rectifier is made is pretty simple. Um, you want to orient two of your diodes to be with their striped side pointing towards the positive of the motor and this is the positive because remember the negative has a black mark so this is the positive. And that means I want both cathodes of the diode, or the side with a stripe, to be facing the positive of the motor. Two diodes, which aren't here yet, are gonna go on this side, and then we will connect at this point, so I kind of wanna form a square with my diodes without having a circuit board or anything. This is just gonna be the easiest way to solder it all in place without holding it. Now for the negative side of the motor, our two diodes go with the stripe side facing away from the motor lead. I'm just going to put my iron on the motor lead and apply some solder and let it trickle down onto both diode leads. That went alright. Um, the next step will be to orient all the diodes and get them ready to solder to my input, my AC input wires. Uh, I'm ready to hook up the wires at this point. It does not matter which goes where because it's alternating current. Here's the first wire. I'll attach it with as much strength as I can. I'm ready to hook up the second wire. that in place, I think it's ready for another test. What I will do is check it with the meter. Uh, so I should be able to check those diodes. I probably should have checked them individually. To use the diode setting, put the red lead uh, on the side that doesn't have a stripe. This is called the anode of the diode. And that's where current or positive, uh, conventional current flows into the diode and then put the black lead anywhere on the other side. Whoops, dropping it here. And the meter will tell you how much voltage the diode will drop. And in this case, or that's also called the forward voltage of the diode. Forward because we're passing current the right way. If we try to go the other way, there's no connection because the diode only conducts in one direction. Anywhere from point five to point seven is a good, actually some diodes might be more like point three um, or point two, but um, it shouldn't be zero and it shouldn't beep. So let's take a look at the other diode, which now I don't remember which was which, but this is it. So it says zero and it's beeping at us. So it should have said point five that direction. Now I'm going to switch. It's beeping in this direction too. So it's not, not only is it 
you're not having a correct voltage drop, it also is conducting current backwards. So it's totally not doing what it's supposed to do. But let's check these two. So again, red lead goes on the side, goes on the side with a stripe. That one is conducting forward, but there's no forward voltage. That should be five, not zero. And this side is connecting backwards. So this diode's doing nothing. It's a dead short, it's damaged. Let's check the other side. It appears that both these diodes are damaged. Yep, both these damaged. So out of the four diodes, one of them was functional. Um, just this one, I think. Yeah, 0.554, so. We're building a new rectifier. Thinking about it now, but um, you know we'll see before I plug it in. I'll also, I'll try to run it on the 12 volt DC power supply before I plug it into the wall. That'll be smart. Hook my DC power supply directly up, uh, just because of how simple the circuit is. It's going straight into the motor. I mean, through the diodes. But we should see no matter which way we flip the switch, it should spin counterclockwise. All right, so uh, I've got the switch in the off position. Uh, move it down. And that was counterclockwise, and now up. 